Hey, welcome to Mineral Talks Live, the weekly live webinar that brings you in-depth and in-person interviews with the mineral people from around the world. Mineral Talks Live is brought to you by a joint effort among the Mineralogical and Geological Museum at Harvard University, the Society of Mineral Museum Professionals, and Blue Cap Productions. Tune in every Wednesday and stay connected to your mineral world. Now, broadcasting live from beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii, the land of aloha, ukuleles, and shakas, this is Mineral Talks Live. Hello and welcome to another episode of Mineral Talks Live. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Brian Swoboda, the president of Blue Cap Productions, and we've got a great show for you today. For those of you who are tuning into our program for the first time, Mineral Talks Live is a weekly webinar put on, my, put on by myself representing Blue Cap Productions, Dr. Raquel Alonso Perez representing the Mineralogical and Geological Museum at Harvard University, and Dr. Eloise Gayou representing the Society of Mineral Museum Professionals, also known as the SMMP. Now this program came about as a result of a conversation Raquel, Eloise, and I had not too long ago. We were talking about COVID-19 and the effects it was having on our community, and we knew that many of us were feeling a deep sense of isolation, especially in light of some of the mineral shows being canceled. We felt that we needed to do something about it. We thought if we could pool our resources, we might be able to generate some interest in people watching a series of broadcasts featuring mineral people just talking and sharing stories. Raquel and Eloise wanted to do it live, and after a bit of convincing, I agreed. And that was the start of Mineral Talks Live. Now, it's come to my attention that there might be a bit of confusion out there when it comes to the name of our show. We are Mineral Talks Live, and some people may have gotten that confused by another online show called Minerals Live that has been put on for many years now by our good friends over at the Collector's Edge in Golden, Colorado. We know that the two shows sound similar, but they are, in fact, two separate shows. I'm personally a big fan of the show that The Collector's Edge puts on, and in fact, I've actually been on Minerals Live a couple times. So we offer our most sincere apologies to both any viewers and The Collector's Edge for any confusion, and we urge our audience to check out Minerals Live if you get the chance. Now back to our show, Mineral Talks Live, Raquel, Eloise, and I felt that by combining our efforts and contacts, we might be able to present a show with a truly international feel, just like our beloved mineral shows. And with me broadcasting from Honolulu, Hawaii, Raquel broadcasting from Cambridge, Massachusetts, and Eloise from various locations in France, our international guest list would reflect our own backgrounds. Now these guests will include people from all walks of the mineral community, and throughout the program, I'll be the face of the show conducting the interviews, while Raquel and Eloise will be the geniuses doing the serious behind the scenes work that really makes the show possible. Now this particular episode you're watching originally aired live on July 29th. However, as occasionally will happen with live shows, we had some technical difficulties with the live show. During our test with our guest, everything went smoothly. However, when it was time to air the show, we had problems getting our guest online, and then, once online, we couldn't seem to get a good enough internet signal from our guest to properly do our interview. Nevertheless, we persevered, and we got a mostly audio interview. But our guest also offered to go back and make a video recording of the things she wanted to share with us, so that we, in turn, could share it with you. So now, we are presenting to you a very edited version of our show. So I say again, thank you for joining us, and now I'd like to introduce our guest for the day, Dr. Vera Hammer, the curatrix of the Natural History Museum of Vienna in Austria. Hello everybody, you are in the Natural History Museum in Vienna. My name is Vera Hammer, I'm the curator of the Mineral and Gem Collection, and I will give you a short guided tour through our museum. So let's start. You have a view about the uh, systematic collections. We had four of these halls uh, of systematic mineral collections and I will give you also a short guided tour through special exhibitions. So let's start here. One of the special exhibition uh, is building rocks, uh, building rocks and uh, from the uh, Boulevard of the big Boulevard Ringstrasse around Vienna 
and all the building rocks which were used for the buildings. Another view is through the systematic, uh, as every systematic collection, it starts with the chemical elements like copper, silver and gold. Uh, our collection is internationally, we not only uh, collect Austrian minerals, we collect worldwide, uh, we collect minerals since more than 400 years. Our oldest sample dates back to the 16th century. I will show you one of the specimens a little bit later on. This is, um, we had uh, another, we had another um, uh, exhibition about uh, mineral and mineral names. Uh, in that case, mineral names and animals. So. Everybody of you knows emerald, and there is also a bird uh, which has nearly the same green color like emerald, and it's called uh, uh, emerald uh, bird. On the basis of the uh, idea of uh, Robert Hazen, we had an exhibition made which is called Evolution of Minerals, which starts with 12 minerals uh, from the beginning of the solar system and it goes from the black earth and uh, with the, the red earth and uh, we show all the, the typical minerals within the different stages of uh, evolution of uh, our planet. So let's go further and I show you the typical minerals of Austria. Aragonite from the Styrian Erzberg, uh, which is uh, also called uh, iron flower. And uh, from this locality, uh, Sinemarit is also uh, very famous and rare. We had uh, two world localities uh, of uh, which are known from every mineral collector. One of that is the famous Habach Valley where we can find emerald. And we had very good specimens from this uh, uh, still open mine. In the neighbor valley, the Untersulzbach Valley, uh, the famous epidot from the Knappenwand were found, uh, which uh, I brought to Tucson last year. All of our halls are uh, decorated with oil paintings from a uh, famous location. Here you see the Habach Valley and uh, the location where the emeralds were found. The most precious hall of our museum is the so-called uh, Gem Hall. Uh, and I did a new decoration and or organization of the uh, Gem uh, systematics. And whenever we do new arrangements in our collections, we make the labeling in Germany, in German and also in English because we had normally not uh, uh, much um, uh, international uh, visitors. Uh, now in uh, Corona times, it's only uh, Austrian visitors. And as you see, the museum is uh, not, uh, not overcrowded. Uh, we are more or less uh, uh, the own, only visitors in this uh, in these halls. So uh, let's go to our most uh, most worthful uh, the most worthful objects. We are in very safe uh, showcases behind secure glass. One of it is the famous opal which was found in uh, Slovakia in the seven, middle of the 17th uh, century. It has a wonderful play of color. And uh, one of the most uh, 
attractive specimen of mineral, co mineral collecting is a sil silver ore from Bodossi in Bolivia. It was mentioned already in 1592 in an inventory book, so it is one of the first uh, collected specimens for mineral collecting itself. Another one which dates uh, also back to the 17th century is this emerald handstone. It is made from uh, emerald crystals from different uh, Colombian localities uh, and glued together to the best specimen of the world in the sense of the Renaissance period. Uh, they want to be a little bit better than God. The most famous object of our collection is the gem bouquet, which was sent uh, uh, as a present from Maria Theresia to her husband, not the other direction. Uh, she likes that he is interested in gems and minerals, and therefore it is a present to his name day. Uh, now let's go to, to two exhibitions we, uh, we opened during Corona time. So the museum was closed for visitors in Corona time, but we can work behind the scenes and use this to open two new exhibitions, one about uh, natural radioactivity and the other one about UV minerals, and I will show you this. We have the, and maybe we are the only museum who had a sample of the uh, natural reactor of Oklo in Gabon. And we show how controlled nuclear fission reaction works. The other one was uh, UV, which was the theme for the next Tucson show. And I hope I can bring some of these samples uh, next year to Tucson. Hopefully, uh, it works. And we had uh, short wave and long wave, so uh, the visitors can look uh, for different lamps and how the minerals, the different minerals, react under uh, the different lamps. As we are a historic museum, we had also uh, mentioned the historic persons who are working in our collection. And one of these uh, men is uh, Frederick Moos. I'm sure most of uh, you know him from the scale of hardness, uh, but he did a lot of other things. He wrote books about uh, systematic of minerals and he did this in Vienna. Uh, and work with a collection from Jakob Friedrich van der Nüll, who was a collector known in uh, all, all of uh, Austria and Germany. And uh, when this uh, guy died, we purchased his collection. So we had a basic of very old and good samples, but we collect uh, still today. Thank you for listening. Um, I know that a lot of people actually looking forward to visiting Vienna. So I see that Denise is definitely coming back as soon as the American border and the European uh, uh, countries are opening again. So I know that people are excited to come and see uh, um, Vera's museum. So at least that there's that. Yes, Peter Davidson, I had a question. I don't know if Vera still can hear us or talk. I'm not sure. Uh, but Vera was mentioning the crystal model collection earlier. Uh, so Peter Davis, Davidson wanted to know more about the, the, the crystal model collection, if Vera can still speak. Vera, yeah, I there? can. Oh, great. So the, the collection is, uh, in fact, not only one single collection. These are uh, different collections over the periods. Uh, one is of René Oy, uh, and other ones we don't know who are the producers of these very exactly uh, wooden motor models. We had also a collection of models uh, made of gypsum, hmm. and we had a collection which were uh, former on display, which you, where you see the wooden models and where you see 
tiny crystals with perfect shape. So you can compare the model and the natural crystal. And uh, I prepare for the next two years. I had a project which uh, uh, funded by the government. So we had enough money to make an exhibition. And it was um, uh, called uh, uh, A Look Inside This. And I want that uh, people know the different uh, sizes between uh, what is a meter and what is the atomic distance crystals. Uh, I want to give them an idea of different kinds of symmetry. I want to give them an idea why specials are used for special purposes, like different kinds of zeolites. So uh, this is uh, a great claim is for the next two years or one and a half year because time is running. And how how many pieces are in the collection, Vera? Oh, I can I can uh, give you a count of that. But uh, you know, we have four, four very large holes with showcases, full in different sizes. Most of the sizes in our collection have the size of a piece, so that's it's the normal um, systematic collection. And in the side, uh, side wall um, um, boxes, we have uh, larger specimens uh, up to half of a meter. So it's easy to, to count them. I never do that, but it's hundreds. Maybe thousands. And these crystal models are such a joy to look at. They really harken back to, uh, I'm not going to say the golden age, but a golden age of mineralogy. Uh, just incredible uh, tools to look at. These were the main uh, educational tools to teach people about crystallography and mineralogy. And um, it sounds like uh, Vera's museum has a wonderful exhibit of it. I've never been to the museum, but uh, I'm dying to visit. Vera, um, anyone so who- So it's time to Vienna. Oh, I would love to. Are you kidding me? Oh, hmm? I would love that. Maybe we go out and get some, uh, some chocolate together too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, coffee is famous in Vienna. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Vera, for any of our viewers uh, who are still with us right now, um, what's the best way to visit the museum? Can they be in touch with you and maybe get a, a private tour or something? So if, if somebody wants a private tour and uh, be sure that I'm around, uh, um, this person should send me an email uh, to my office, uh, official um, email account and uh, we can make an arrangement and you get a private tour from the Silla to the roof of the museum. And uh, it's not only the collection, it's uh, uh, the building itself that uh, should be um, worth to see because uh, uh, all of the floors from, we have three floors and the cellar, everything is full staffed with objects, natural history objects. Wow, what, what an not, incredible and generous. If you visit the museum in Vienna, not only the minerals, I think, we had a very big collection in meteorite, which is very famous. Mm -hmm. I don't hear you now. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, a, it's a general offer. And if you come uh, not to the main door, if you come to the side door, uh, I can, uh, if you come to the side door, I can offer you that you have, don't have to pay entry, uh, pay entry and that you get a guided tour by myself. Wonderful. And I think um, there's a secret code word, and I believe the so, code word. So, Brian, I want to know now when. Uh, sure. Brian, if you still can hear me, uh, yes. I want to know how many persons 
feeling uh, a meeting so the next years <laughs> i'm around to well, bring hundreds I, I, of tours <laughs> i think our latest count is 3000 we have uh people responding and we have over 3000 <laughs> people saying that they want to come uh uh, uh, with the next three weeks. So um, uh, put your walking shoes on, Vera. Okay, so use the time before the next shutdown is coming. <laughs> <laughs> Vera, that is an incredibly generous offer. Thank you so much for those of you who are still with us. Um, if you make a trip to Vienna, you have to have to do this and we'll get you Vera's contact information. Vera, just for a point of reference, where is the museum in terms of the center of uh, Vienna? Where are you located within the city? It is within the center of Vienna. It's on the, on the special boulevard of Vienna surrounded. This boulevard was uh, uh, surrounding the first district of Vienna, but it's in the, it belongs to the inner center of the city. So you can walk from the from the inner city per Peters to the museum. Wonderful! That is that is. And so on complete. this uh, boulevard, which is called uh, Ringstrasse, like there are many of the important building, buildings, like the Museum of Fine Arts, which looks uh, nearly the same like our building. There is. This City Hall, there is the Parliament, there is Opera and Court Theatre, and all of these buildings are nearly from the same area in the end of the 19th century. Wonderful. And Vera, is there a nice restaurant nearby where if uh, guests come and get a private tour, they can take you out for a nice lunch or dinner afterwards? Oh, we had very much uh, restaurants around uh, because it's the first district, but they are very expensive. We, we had also a um, uh, possibility to eat in the museum in the big uh, hall. It's very nice to sit there, have a coffee and a, a small lunch or dinner. And... Uh, if someone wants to come to Vienna, I give him the best tips to, to eat the uh, best Viennese uh, cooking and uh, which also be within the budget. Wow, well, I, I'm starting to drool already, Vera. And just for the watchers out there, uh, remember if you take Vera out, uh, if you buy her, she, she's a little bit like a gremlin. So if you buy her three drinks, she's known to get up and dance on the table. So Vera, you really have to control yourself. 3,000 dances on tables uh, is, a, is a lot of extra work. So, so before you had bad ideas, this is not allowed at the moment in Vienna because COVID-19 regulations, yes? Not more than 100 or 200 people at the beginning of August. 3,000 people we are far away to make such parties. <laughs> but anyway, we will find a way. <laughs> Wonderful. Vera, thank you. Eloise, I don't know if we have any more questions uh, from our guests. We're, uh, uh, we're over our one hour mark right now. So we're going to start ending the show. Uh, if there are any other questions or any comments from anyone on the chat uh, or the Q&A, now would be the time to, uh, to ask them of Vera. Well, uh, first of all, most people understand the technical diff difficulties and they just say thank you for uh, trying to be with us today. So thank you all for sticking with us. I know that William Motes is still online and I allowed him to, to talk and uh, to put his microphone on. I don't know, William, if you had a question for, for Vera and if I don't hear from you within a few next seconds, maybe I, uh, we can just end the, end the show at this point. William, are you with us? No, I don't think so. All right. So basically, a lot of thank you from a lot of people. I know that Shelly Surgeon is saying hi to you, Vera. Um, so you have a lot of support from all around the world, it seems, Vera. So we all we hope to see you soon. I hope that Tucson is going to be happening. If it's not happening, maybe we can see each other in Europe, at least. And um, OK, there is some George Adenman. Uh,
Um, it looks like he has a question. So we'll see, we'll figure it out. I'm, I'm gonna stop here and I'm gonna answer in the chat log to all the, the, the remaining questions in the chats. So okay. Brian. So thank, thank you for everybody who joined me. Sorry of the delay with the computer system or what else it is. And uh, within the next days, I start working, official working next week. You get a small video where I show you a guided tour through the museum. So everything we talked today, you can see then on this short video, if this is okay for you. That's so thanks great. to everybody. Yeah, and it's perfect uh, solution. evening time in Vienna already. That's yeah. perfect, Vera. That sounds good. Thank you so much. Vera, thank you again, and thank you for your patience, not, not getting overly frustrated. Uh, we made the best of the situation that we had. We want to thank everyone for joining us again today. Uh, we apologize for the technical difficulties, but at least we got a chance to chat with Vera. Remember, uh, tune into our program next week. We're going to have Ryan Roney from the Telus Science Museum in Georgia uh, talking to us about uh, a lot of the great things that they have on exhibit there. Until then, have a fantastic week. Thank you for joining us. Take care. Thank bye, you. Bye-bye.